All right, everyone. Welcome to the Binary Atlas podcast, where we talk about anything technology that uh, impacts our lives. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about solar. So joining me today, as always, is my wonderful, lovely wife, Brandy. So we're going to talk about solar and the solar system that we put in at our house. We have been living with this system since... Uh, when did we put this in, Brandy? Do you remember? Yes, it was. Um, it went online November 2021. Yes, it was installed uh, mid to late October of 2021. Okay. And then it went live uh, into November. Uh, so what we've done is we've gathered up all the data for the entire calendar year of 2022 we're going to talk to you about some numbers and about what it produced and how it affected our electricity bill. So first thing, let's talk about the system size in general. So the system size is 11.22 kilowatts, and that is 33 panels. Uh, that's distri distri distributed across the roof of our house. Um, it's basically broken down into four different arrays on top of the roof. Two of those arrays are positioned really good. They're on the southern facing uh, roof of the house. Yes, and each of those um, has 10 panels. Yeah, and then we've got two other arrays that are located on the back part of our house. One's a small one that has only two panels, and one is one that has 10 or 11 panels, uh, and that's above our garage. Uh, I'm going to put some documentation that will be in the show notes if you guys want to see what we're talking about. Uh, we don't mind sharing that with you guys. Uh, so 11.22 kilowatts, 33 panels. Estimated yearly produ production is 11,995 kilowatt hours. There's, of course, a guarantee from the company, and I pulled up on our records. Our records say that in 2022, we produced 12.5 megawatt hours. So if you were to convert the 11,995 to megawatt hours, then you're looking at 11.9 megawatt hours. So we produce more than what they said we were going to. Uh, one of the things you'll note different on this is that the total offset was supposed to be 100% of our electricity usage. It has not turned out to be that way. It's only turned out to be about half of our electricity usage. Yes, um, they had estimated about how much electricity we would use but when they estimated that it was using older bills that was before the COVID-19 pandemic. So during that time, we were not working at home or anything like that. So during the week, there was no one here. So we had the air conditioner set at a higher rate and the heat set at a lower rate and it would come on on a schedule to either cool or warm the house. Things changed, of course, when COVID hit and um, I ended up changing jobs. So I now work from home. So we do try to keep the house as comfortable as possible. And then another thing that changed is um, the way our house is positioned. We actually have uh, one and a half stories. Our house is approximately 2,800 square feet. Um, at the time that we were getting the system installed, our teenage son moved to one of the bedrooms in the upstairs part of our house. And because of that, um, we now have to keep the temperature a little bit cooler or warmer, depending on the season, so that he will be comfortable. So that those are all things that have impacted our electricity usage. So that's true. Now, we, but we, but we did lots of things to prepare for solar, right? We did. So we re-insulated. We, when we bought the house, we had done a renovation on it. So we have new windows, new doors. Uh, we are as about as well insulated. We had to end up changing our air units out, both inside and outside units. So we those did. are new, efficient Units, we are as efficient as this house is going to get at this, for at this now. point. For I mean, now, there, for now. I mean, there are some other things that we'll be doing in the future. Um, our current washer and dryer are approximately 12 to 13 years old. Um, they still work um, when they get to the point where they're not working as well. Uh, we'll look at replacing those. Um, we do have an energy efficient uh 
electric stove. We have an energy efficient refrigerator. Um, we do have newer water heaters. One is electric uh, that just serves the upstairs part of the house. And then we have a second um, 50 gallon gas. Um, so it's natural gas water heater that, um, you know, uses our natural gas, obviously it's a natural gas one, but, um, so that's not drawing any electricity. And of course with the newer units, those are energy efficient. The heat is gas, but of course the pump part and the fan part of our system is electric. So we have a bit of a combination unit. Yeah. So Again, if anybody ever asks me, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about going solar, I always tell them that your first step is not to look at solar. Your first step is to look at your house and make sure it's as energy efficient as possible. Right? Yes. Well, and that includes, too, um, we've switched out to all LED bulbs. Yes, we did that. Um, I think we may have one room that may have some incandescents that are uh, decorative, but that room, uh, those lights are not actually used often. Yeah. Now, uh, also... You got to remember that, and just recently, uh, Shine Solar, which is the company that did ours, uh, they contacted me because I told them I'd be interested in maybe batteries later on down the road. And they did a new calculation on our home and said that in order for me, because you have to have battery packs large enough to sustain your house's output, right? So it's not a matter of how long you can store the energy. It's about how much energy you can supply at any one time, which determines the number of batteries you have to have. And those number of batteries has to be paired with the proper number of solar panels. Otherwise, you can't charge them, right? So they were telling me that we needed an extra 24 panels. <laughs> which, where would they possibly uh, they, go? I don't know. They said they found some room or my, my, I don't know. We didn't get that far because I told them I didn't want to pay for for that. Uh, it was still, it was going to be another $24,000. So I told him I wasn't interested at this time, but we were going to need more panels to charge those batteries. So that tells me that really, if we wanted to be truly hundred percent efficient, it was going to cost a lot more money. And that is one thing I wanted to kind of segue into is some numbers on the finance part of this. So I will tell you this. So throughout 2022, our total net in energy cost were $934.58. But we generated $941, right? So basically what we did is we cut our electricity use in half. Now, it was really apparent in the summer. Yes, we still had an over $100 uh, electric bill in the summer, but it wasn't $400. Exactly. Or almost $500 like it was one month, yes. one summer. Yes, well, and our lowest bill of 2022 was actually... In April, um, it was sixteen forty nine, which was basically just the energy usage cost, yep. any taxes and fees, because um, we weren't running the air conditioner as much in the preceding month. So really, March and April, we get a lot of sunshine usually, but we're not quite using the air conditioner yet. We rely on some ceiling fans to keep air moving. Sometimes we open the windows to let in some fresh air. So we really noticed a difference in those months. And then in the summer, even the heat of the summer in July, our bill was only $177, which for a house this size with everybody home, that was really good compared to what similar houses our size were paying for energy. Yeah, I mean, so that's, that's good. That's kind of what we wanted. Yes, a we reduction. Knew, yeah, a reduction. And we knew that's what that was. this would be now. I will say that in hindsight, I would say maybe this isn't a 50,000. I mean, we we uh, paid $54,000 for this system. I think, yes, it was closer to 55. Yeah. But that isn't just the system. That was also the labor, the yes, inspection, everything, because we just didn't have the time to put it in ourselves and we had been saving. So we went ahead and set up financing. Um, they offered us a flex good leap loan, uh, 25 years at 3.98%. And so our payment would have been, um, $222 per month. Um, so of course you would pay that plus the electric bill. So, as long as you have the means to do that, it's a worthwhile investment um, if that's something that you want to do, if you want to 
try to be a little bit more environmentally friendly. Um, now, of course, we did have some money saved up. So we were working on some renovations for the house. And during that time, we decided that the best way to spend our money would be to go ahead and pay off the solar. So we spent some of our savings um, to pay off that solar loan. It was quite pricey, but it did increase the value of our house significantly. Um, so I don't regret that we did that. No, I don't. I don't either. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we got the system. It's performing like they said it would. They didn't it sell is. us something that isn't performing uh, the way they said it would. I just wish that this system, considering everything that happened and it's only doing about half our electricity, I think it should have been about a $30,000, $35,000 system. But I get where all that money went. Yes, definitely. Plus, I mean, you have skilled people putting it in and tying it in. I mean, that included a certified electrician putting it in, uh, tying it into the meter, making sure that there's no danger to any linemen or anything like that. Um, now, if any listeners are thinking about getting solar, I would recommend getting multiple quotes. We ended up getting absolutely. like five. We did. And we went with one. Three. Yes. We went with one that was in the middle. Um, one of them was completely outrageous. I, I want to say it was in the $90,000 range. Yeah, something like that. And then there was another that told us that they could do the whole thing for 15000 And that seemed very shady. Um, it just didn't seem like enough money so, for that. Yeah. So middle of the road, what we went. Now, like Brandy said, the low bid was a local guy. I don't remember his name. But basically, he wanted cash. You couldn't finance it. You couldn't use a credit card. The guy wanted cash. Uh -huh. Kind of for... reminds me of the era uh, when I was a young man. Uh, my grandma bought aluminum siding on her house because a guy came through the neighborhood selling aluminum siding. And like three of the houses on her block had aluminum siding. That's kind of what that guy felt like when it comes to solar. It was like, you know, yeah, we'll put it in for you, dirt cheap. But I, I'm glad we didn't do it. I don't think it would have been a good system. I, I don't think it would have been either. And, you know, speaking of that, the whole door-to-door uh, -door salesperson, um, there have been a lot of advertisements recently about zero-cost uh, solar systems, erase your electric bill. Um, it really irritates me when I see that because it is not possible to completely erase your electric bill because there's always going to be those usage fees and taxes. Correct. So that's very misleading to tell someone that they're not going to have an what, electric bill. What most of those places are doing is they are because they say that because they are not selling you the system. They are leasing it to you. Oh, I see. And then what they're doing is they're becoming your electric provider. I see. Right? So instead of paying your electric company, yes, you're paying your electric company zero dollars because you're now paying them. People need to be really careful with those because what happens is you don't own the system. So if you decide you need to move and you need to sell your house, you can't because you don't own the solar system that is attached to your roof. So the person buying your house either has to A, agree to take over the lease agreement of those solar panels or you have to have them remove and re-roof your house. Oh, yes, because I would imagine that that would damage the roof. Yeah, having so you to take have to off. terminate your lease, pay whatever penalties is in that contract to terminate that lease, then have your roof repaired, right? Because most of these companies just drill into the roof. That's true. So, yeah, so those, 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 I've read many, many things about just avoid any kind of leasing. Absolutely. You want to make sure that you own that. That way, if something happens, you can sell your home with the solar attached. Um, of course, we're not planning to move, but you never know what life has to has to bring in the future. That's true. So. What, I, what I suggest, you sit down, you figure out how much money you have to spend, right? Then you go out and get solar quotes. And you find a company that is trustworthy and has a good rate for per panel. And then you tell them, look, this is what we can afford. If that's five panels... 10 panels, 20, whatever. If you want to go solar, put that in. When you get your net metering agreement with your electric provider, that is usually, you'll have to read your terms and conditions, but that's usually good for 20 years. So you're grandfathered in, right? So there is nothing stopping you, say, in five years, adding another 10 or 20 panels, right? The systems are modular. They can be added to, right? So if solar is something you want to do, 
do it, but do it with the expectation on something you can afford. You know, don't go in just getting this giant system thinking, oh, well, the electric company is going to cut me a check every month. Yes, because that will not happen. No, and that's another good thing to talk about too, right? So how does this work? How does net metering work, right? You don't get paid for the electricity. What happens is, is your panels are producing a certain amount when the sun is out. Whatever your house does not use gets back uploaded to the grid, all right? The meter keeps track of how much you push up to the electric company. So if I push up 10 kilowatt hours, they hold it for me like a bank. And then when I use 10 kilowatt hours down from the energy company, they take it out of my bank first, then I start getting charged for it, right? It's almost like the grid is your battery. You will never, in my experience, get a check. You would have to have banked electricity with them for like two years before they will cut you a check on what you've uploaded, right? Which means your house would have to have net zero energy uses for two years, and that's just not feasible. No, not if you're living there. Not if you're living there. So basically what you're doing when you do net tie-in or net metering, you are using the electric grid as your battery instead of having battery backup. Now, battery backup is a great way to go, but they are really expensive right now. They those are. have not come down. They, I keep hearing that they're they're going to come down. The technology is getting better, but those have not come down yet. They have not. And then with one of our previous podcasts, we spoke about electric vehicles, and a lot of those electric vehicles can be the battery backup for a house. So it seems that to continue to be competitive, those battery prices will have to yeah, come down. Yeah, and that's what I told the guy when he when he was talking to me on the phone. So. I have a reservation. We talked about this in one of our EV podcasts of the Silverado EV, but most newer EVs come out, especially the trucks that have the larger batteries on them, are going to be able to be the battery backup for your house. So I told the guy, why would I spend $24,000 to put your battery system in when if I'm planning on getting a truck that's fifty or $60,000, then why not just spend that $24,000 toward that truck, Right. The other thing that I did not like about the battery systems from the solar company was you're financing it. If you don't got $24,000 in cash, you're financing it, right? Well, how long are you going to finance it? Five, 10 years, right? Well, you know, these batteries are only going to last about 10 years before they need to be replaced. So you can barely pay them off before you have to replace them. So there is no break even point where you own the batteries and they're helping your system and you're not having to pay on them. And I guess the same could be said about solar, depending on how long you're having to finance it and well, how long you intend to own your home. Yes and no. That, you know, that really varies depending on the situation. But solar panels don't go bad most, most of the time, right? What happens when a solar panel ages is a solar panel loses its efficiency, right? So they're not 100% efficient out of the factory. Uh, they're only like maybe, I think the best you can get on the commercial side, residential, is like a 25% efficient panel, right? On uh, converting sunlight to electricity. That's just how the technology works right now. It's getting better and better every year, but that's kind of where we're at. Every year, it loses a certain percentage of efficiency. They are warranty. Most companies warranty the cells in the panel for 20 years, and say that in the span of 20 years, they guarantee that it will not drop more than 8% efficiency, right? So even after you finish paying off the panels, yes, they aren't producing as much electricity, but they are still producing electricity. That is true. And they and will like continue to produce electricity, maybe just not at that same rate. Batteries aren't the same. Batteries are good for so many charge and discharge cycles. So at the end of their life, they are done. You have to replace them. There is no them being less efficient. All right. So we've talked about the panels. We've talked about the system. We've talked about the cost. Um, I guess we can talk about maybe the roof mounting situation. A lot of people have asked me questions about whether to get it roof mounted or pole mounted in your yard. Yes. And I mean, that really depends on what type of situation you have. In our case, um, we had to go with roof mounting because we don't have a large lot 
um, of property. So in order to have the number of panels we would need to produce this amount of electricity, we had to have them mounted on our roof. And I'll admit, I was reluctant at first because I thought, oh, they're going to be ugly on the roof. And um, I realize now that was a little silly because they don't look bad. I mean, they're flat yeah. black panels. We have a green roof. Um, so really, I don't even notice the panels are there anymore. Well, we so there are different kinds of panels. There are the panels that are the traditional blue squares. You know, ours are the uh, elongated uh, black panel. So the whole panel is black. You can't really see the solar part of it all that well unless the sunshine's hitting it just right. So it looks really good on the roof. Uh, we don't have any problems with leaks. Uh, Shine Solar did a really good job with mounting the hardware on the roof. Everything's sealed. Everything's good. They are warranted for up to, uh, I want to say, 60 mile an hour per win winds. So if a storm were to blow one off, that's warranted. They are warranted to up to a, uh, a one inch diameter hailstone. If that were to hit the panel and break it, that's a warranty, right? So, and technically they are helping protect the roof, right? Because there's certain sections true. of the roof that cannot be hit by hail. But, you know, I thought about that for a while. And the truth is, that's a great statement that a salesman might make to you, but it doesn't really make any sense because if you have hail damage on your roof, it's the entire roof. And if you got a section of it damaged, the whole thing has to be replaced anyway. Generally. So, well, and that's something to consider too. If you have to have your roof replaced in the near future, um, within the next several years, you know that you're going to have to replace your roof. I would not put them on the roof because that's a good question. They, I mean, that's a good they point. have to be removed in order to put a new roof on. That's correct. So if you're thinking about going solar, going solar at about the time when you need a new roof anyway, if you're doing roof mount would be the way to go. Yes, but you'd want to have that new roof put on first. Well, yeah, you, you would you would coordinate, right? The solar guys would come in after the roof guys or whatever. Yes, that uh, is assuming you've recently won the lottery because this is a lot of money we're talking about here. It is. Now, ones. we're talking about the difference between roof mounting and, and, and yard mounting. Yard mounting is more expensive. You won, it's the extra labor and materials to put poles in your yard to mount the solar panels to. Then you've got extra costs when it comes to bearing a line from those panels to your house and all the electrical tie-ins and things like that. So it is more expensive to do ground mount. Yes. But, but if, if you're that person that you just don't want them touching your roof, mm -hmm. that's kind of your only or, option. Or, I mean, if you have a large amount of property and you want to hide these solar panels somewhere and put them somewhere where they're facing the sun in a better place and you have that ability and you have the funds to do it, then absolutely it makes sense. I mean, to if we had the land and the funds, I so would have put them out in out in the yard instead of putting them on the roof. But that was that we didn't, we don't have it. That's just how it is. We just don't have the space in our yard. Then we've got, uh, well, I mean, so far we haven't had any major issues with them. Um, I guess something that I've always wondered about when we were talking about the net metering, um, when, let's say during the day, it's sunny and the solar panels are pulling in that electricity, I've always wondered, is our house at that point using the electricity from solar or is it just uploading some and we're getting it from the grid? All right, how so does that work? How the tie-in works is when the solar panels start producing electricity, your house is first in line, right? So anything in your house uses that electricity first. If all the loads in your house are enough to use what the solar is producing, the excess goes to the grid. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. And, the, and if you had batteries, that's what would happen. So the excess would go to the battery to keep the battery charged, right? And then if the battery was 100% and your house was using it and there was still excess, then that would go to the grid. Makes sense. And then that's what the, and so, but you know, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because that brings up probably the last thing we'll talk about here. What happens when the power's out? Okay. And this is a very important question to talk about because when the power is out, we still don't have power. That is correct because we do not have a battery backup at this time. That's correct. So what happens is, is if you're grid tied, 
when the power goes out, you have to have a relay in place that automatically cuts you off from the grid. That is done to protect the linemen that are working on the power lines because they will get shocked if you're uploading while they're trying to fix down power lines, right? It's a safety thing. You don't get a choice in the matter. If the power is out, you're cut off from the grid. Unless you have the battery backup. Unless you have battery backup, right? Then you can start sucking from your batteries. But the fun thing is, is that even in that situation, once your batteries are out, you're still out, right? So the batteries are your backup generator. And then normally, you know, during the day, if you're home using your house like normal and the grid power is out and then you're using your batteries at night, more than likely, you're only going to stay up a couple of days, right? Because Depending on the size of your battery. Yeah, because you just don't have enough sunlight to charge them up during the day and use your house for the next day. You'd have to have and a massive system for that. Yes, well, and that's talking bare minimum because when you're in some sort of an emergency situation and you're using a backup battery, that's not the time to break out the microwave and the hair dryer and do all your laundry. That is essential. You know, you need your heating or your air at a point where you can be comfortable. You need your refrigerator and freezer. Um, that that's what you need. You don't want to have a bunch of power sucking appliances. Yeah, so going. that's that's just how it is. So you either got to have batteries or you got to still have to have a backup generator. If the power is out and the sun is shining, you still will not have electricity from panels without those two things in place. That is right. So all in all, we are satisfied with our system from Shine Solar. Um, I do wish it would have cost about fifteen thousand <laughs> less. But, um, I mean, we paid for the labor. We had to. And not everybody's equipped to install these themselves. Um, and plus, you would have to pay a certified electrician to tie it into the system anyway. So yeah. I, I don't regret that we did it. Um, I am thankful that we had been frugal with our funds and that we had enough money saved up to be able to pay for that. Of course, that was saving for many years, um, at well, least 15 years that we saved to be able to do that. I'll, I'll sum it up with this statement, right? Why did we do this? We did it because this is our forever home. We don't plan on moving. And this is basically us planning for retirement because as we age, the house electrical needs will be taken care of. When the kids aren't here, we're not going to have near as much electrical usage. That is true. Right? Right. So uh, this is basically us making sure our electric costs are under control. Now, why do I say under control is because when we had the system designed, we were paying 10 cents a kilowatt hour. As of today, we are paying 14 cents a kilowatt hour. Yes. And it doesn't so, sound like much when you look at it that way. But then when you add it up over the whole year, it really does add up. It adds up. So th this is our way of taking control of our electrical bill and having plans for the future. That is true. And we definitely don't regret it. And if you are considering solar, definitely give Sean Solar a call. Uh, tell him that Jonathan Collins sent you and get a quote. Uh, they do provide a free quote. Uh, they'll, you know, take pictures of your home. They'll use Google Maps, whatever they need to do to set up a system. Uh, you'll give them access to your electric bills and they'll design you different levels of systems and they'll do all of that for free so that you can consider their, their service. All right, guys, this is Jonathan Collins and Brandy Collins. We appreciate you uh, listening to the podcast today. Remember that we also have the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at binary Atlas, and we will see everyone next week.